Today I will show you how you can create this cute robot right here out of bunch of different images. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. I'm really thrilled about this one because we will create this interesting cute robot out of bunch of different images, practically bunch of garbage. And in this photo manipulation tutorial, you will again learn a lot of different and interesting useful tips and tricks. So stay with me till the end and enjoy the episode. So without further ado, let the fun begin. So guys, we will create this robot basically out of a bunch of garbage. As you can see, this old uh, water can, then another can. You can see a lot of different, basically garbage images, nothing special, or binoculars, etc. And you can apply exactly the same methods, same techniques to create any kind of robot you can imagine. You just need to find the proper images for that kind of robot you want to make. So let's start by creating a new blank document and as you can see, I will use 2500 by 2500 and that's it. This is our starting point. Then I will go and start with this can here. So basically I already extracted all my images for this episode because this episode will be a little bit longer and I don't want to waste your time even more to watch me and uh, watching me extracting these elements. If you're not familiar how to select anything in Photoshop and extract it, please watch my tutorial about that right here. Right guys, so as you can see, I already have this trash can extracted. I just use a pen tool, trace it out and that's it. So I will copy this and paste in that blank document just to find it because I have a lot of images like this. Then I'll press Ctrl or Command T, rotate it, something like this and then just make it smaller. So I will put it somewhere here. This is okay for a start, maybe I will make it smaller or bigger. I don't think that I will make it bigger, but this is for start. Okay, then I will go and find, this will be our body. Then let's go and find our head. So again, I just trace it around with a pen tool and that's it. So let's copy this and paste it right here. Again, control command T, make it smaller. And this will be our head somewhere somewhere here. I will definitely make the body smaller. So the head will be probably something like this. Okay, and let's make a body a little bit smaller. Put it down here. And this is, this is okay. For now, this is okay. We can always recrop this, move it up, down, left and right. So we will see. All right now, for a start, first I want to deal with the head part. I want to get rid of these unwanted elements. And for that, let's just rename this. This is body. This is head. Okay, I will use lasso tool and just select everything around this part. And guys, in the new Photoshop CC 2019, we have really good content aware fill tool that works even better than a classical one. But because a lot of you are still on a previous version of Photoshop, I will use classical uh, older content aware fill tool. So let me show you one really cool trick right now. If I, if I want to fill this with a content aware, aware tool and I already selected part of the background, you will see what will happen. I just need to press shift and backspace and I will have this fill dialog box. I just need to choose from a bunch of these settings, content aware, press OK. And you will see that this part of the background that I don't want to be filled will be filled because I selected. But I will now show a really cool trick how to avoid this, how to apply content aware only on the parts that are on inside of this can. You just need to go and lock right here, lock the transparent pixels. So because this element, this can, this head, is on transparent background. I will lock that and now when I press shift backspace and content aware OK, it will fill only this part inside. So this is really cool trick guys. Remember that it will save you a lot of time and uh, nerves in bunch of situations. So I can now uncheck this, but let me show another trick. If I again lock this, I will have a lock icon here. I lock transparent pixels. If I use a brush, 
any kind of brush. Let's just use this brush, make it smaller. I, I can paint with any color, let's use black, but I will not paint outside of this element. So this is cool trick to know. All right, now let's go and clean up this a little bit more. Let's clean up this part. Again, content aware. So let's clean up. I can clean up this part or I can leave it like antenna. So I will leave it. I will just use a stamp, clone stamp tool, sample this and just clean out this part. Maybe I can just clean this inside part a little bit. So let's use softer brush. And this will not practically practically be visible, but okay, this can be like some kind of antenna right there. All right, we are done with that. Now let's clean the body part. It's the same procedure. I will just lock transparent pixels. I will use lasso tool and just quickly select this content aware. And that's it. Now I will use you can see here healing brush. I will sample some part right here. Okay, and just paint with a healing brush. All the way down. It does need to be perfect because this is our old broken robot, so it's not a perfect one. But let's just fix this a little bit. Okay, and this is pretty much okay. So let me see. The body is finished, the head is finished. Now let's go and play with some other elements. So let's play with the eyes. I will use these binoculars as our as robot eyes. So I already extracted this part of binoculars. As you can see, I just cut it out here and here, and that's it. So I will copy whole image with a layer mask and just press Control Command T. Right click, flip horizontal and just put it here. Okay, of course I need to put it above the head and let's call it eyes. And now let's make the eyes a little bit smaller. Let me see, like this maybe, put it here, rotate it, just position it to fit perfect position where the eyes should be, probably somewhere here like like this a little bit down maybe so i'm satisfied with that maybe to make the eyes a little bit bigger something like this let me see yeah it's okay also i can tilt the head uh, another trick that i already told you in one of previous episodes but i will re repeat here one more time if you are in a move tool and holding control command key and click on a certain element certain element in the scene you will select that layer so the body i click on the body i selected the body the head i selected the head the eyes i selected the eyes and now i undo it too much time so let's just fix this so this is really useful it will save you a lot of time if you're doing some selection you don't need to go to check which layer is which you can just do like that. So let's make the eyes like this. Maybe a little bit smaller now. Okay, let's leave it like this for now. Also, I can go on the head and maybe tilt the head a little bit more down and put it somewhere here and make it a touch bigger like this and i like to zoom guys to, to see the whole image from a distance to see if everything is okay now i see that the eyes are too big so i will just make eyes even smaller and rotate them a little bit try to play with the zoom while you're creating some uh, your photo manipulations because you will see better overall image so that's pretty much Okay, right now. Right now I want to fix some parts here of the eyes. That's why I leave left the, the mask untouched. And I will just use a brush, black color. I will use something around 40% and just make this more round like that. 
and this part here too and this part here to a little bit rounder okay that's cool now i will go right click on the mask and then say apply layer mask so i'll i will not have any mask anymore another trick that i want to do with the eyes here is just quickly select this black part here i will use a pen tool and just select this okay like this and i will press ctrl and enter or command and enter to have selection of that and just press ctrl or command j and i will have that element on a separate layer i want to put it somewhere here but i want to move it below the eyes so to have some kind of connection between the eyes and this can and i will press ctrl command t right click and go to warp and just warp this a little bit fit the shape better so something like this will be cool and that's it i will press enter then i will just copy one more time Control command j move it right here and do the same Control command t make it smaller right click warp it and just warp it around here so to fit this shape right here and let me see that's it and as you can see guys without that Mm, not so good but with this we have better connection with the can so that's really cool All right now let's go and merge those two layers together okay press ctrl command e and now we have those eyes okay we need to merge this one too and we have eyes in one layer let's go and find other elements so we have a can this can okay let's start with this I extracted this part right here as you can see and this will be our shoulder so I will copy this and go back to this guy go above the body and paste the shoulder right here so I will move this somewhere here okay and this will be perfect shoulder okay I think the size is right so let me check yeah the size is okay so what I don't like here I don't like this part I will create a mask and with a brush with some harder brush like 70 or 80 percent black color I will just erase this and I will draw some parts of the arm here a little bit later okay this is shoulder and i will just right click and say apply layer mask i don't need this part ever all right let's go and find other elements let's let's use this front light of the car so this one i already extracted this as i already said i extracted all elements because i want to save the time for this tutorial okay let's copy this front light and go back to a robot document and just paste it here above the shoulder for example and this is it so I can move it right here this light will be somewhere here maybe to make it a bit bigger maybe this is too much something like this and somewhere here Okay, maybe to make this body a little bit smaller. Just a little bit something like, like this. Okay, then to move the shoulder a little bit down. And this is cool. What I don't like here, mm, I don't like this too much, so I will just go to the body. Use a clone stamp tool and just with 20% opacity just paint out a little bit here and here just a bit okay just to be a little bit brighter so that's that's all I wanted maybe to add some texture from here like that that's much better so let's go to the light again and maybe just control command T and just hold control or command just move those corners a little bit just to rotate it a touch like this and that's cool okay and now 
let's go and add some other elements. Let's go and add the neck, for example. For neck, I will use, guys, this, this part here, this tool, and I just selected this part. So I will copy that, go to robot, and go in between head and the body. So I will paste it here, and I will put it here. But I want to modify the shape a little bit. So I will use the puppet tool, add it, Puppet Warp. If you're not familiar with the Puppet Warp tool, you can watch my tutorial about that right here. So I will expand this a little bit. Just add a few elements here, maybe here like this, like that. Okay. And let's see, let's see how this fits. This is cool. So I can use it like that just to position it properly, maybe somewhere here. And it looks like it's curved down, like his head is a little bit tilted down. So that's cool. Okay, now let me show you another really cool trick, and that's how to create a metal bars. So I want to create part of his arm. It will be a metal bar and this is really easy to create in Photoshop just by drawing it. We can draw it and apply the texture. So I will show you now it's really easy and fun. Uh, I will just go and create new layer. So just let me see. Let's rename this first. Just rename this light. Then this is neck. Okay, and now let's create new layer and let's rename it to arm. But before that, just before that, I want to add another element right here. So this one, I already extracted. So let me show really quickly. I will add this, make it smaller. And by holding control or command key, I will move the corners a little bit, move it down, move these corners a touch, and I will make this overall smaller. So this will be another part of the arm right here. Let me see something like this maybe. Just want to position this first, to have a better understanding where my arm, metal arm will go. So this will be probably okay here, but just to make it a bit smaller. So this is cool. All right, now uh, this is, I don't know how to call it, but arm number two is so creative right so this arm right here how i like to how i like to draw it i will use a pen tool and just create a shape like this it will go right here a little bit here and then it will go straight up make a curve like this with the control command key press we can move this and fine tune it and just finish it somewhere here. Of course, we can even fine tune it a little bit better. And this will probably be okay. I will press control or com com command enter. So control and enter or command enter to load the selection. And then I will fill this with 50% gray. To fill it with 50% gray, just press shift backspace and choose 50% gray, that's it. And now we have our arm. I will deselect it. And guys, now we need to transform this into metal arm to add it, to add a shape to that, to be a rounded shape. And we're done. So now everything is basically based on dodge and burn. We need to dodge and burn this arm. If you're not familiar with dodging and burning, please watch my tutorial about that right here and then continue watching this. So there are a lot of ways how you can dodge and burn this and how you can make this arm around it. But I will show you another trick like I did at the beginning of this tutorial, I will use another method here to do this. I will lock transparent layers and I will paint with a black and white color just with a black and white color on this arm. So I will use a brush, really soft brush and black and white colors and maybe 10% opacity or so. I will just paint right here. So as you can see, this is already getting really nice rounded shape, a little bit right here of the darkness. And then with the white color, I can 
and paint right here like this okay don't worry about this is not too smooth so okay like that maybe four percent opacity just do like that and then again with the black color right here and also with the black color I want to paint here inside because this will be definitely a lot darker and now I'll show you one really nice trick how you can smooth everything out have a better overall look so just a few more moments okay let me see this is already better as you can see this is really nice and rounded bar so now we'll go to filter blur Gaussian blur now it's too much just a few pixels just to smooth everything out here as you can see a little bit more maybe a little bit more like that or even 3.5 okay and before and after this is much better so yeah before and after much better now we need to apply a texture here so we have a metal texture it's here I will copy it and paste it back to our document and I will clip it to affect only the arm layer like this and now what I like to do I like to move it right here and to position it to make it bigger or smaller depends how I like this to look and to put it in overlay or soft light blending mode so let's first start put it in overlay and guys as you can see this is really nice metal arm we can make this even smaller and just find the part of the texture that you want to have it here so maybe this or not I'm not sure maybe this this looks nice so make it a little bit bigger and like that I will press OK and this is it now we have really nice metal arm if we want to make everything brighter we can go again down here and uh, play with the black and white colors so maybe I want to add a little bit more white color with maybe 5% opacity and also you can use curves guys and do it classic dodging, classical dodging and burning whatever you want whatever you find best for your needs your taste so this is cool I will just leave it like this for now all right now let's add some hands here so my hand will be made out of a tool this tool so I already extracted it I will just copy everything actually let's just let's just extract this completely copy this layer and go back to your document paste it about this okay control command T make it smaller rotate make it even smaller and put it somewhere here so I need to put it all the way up because I want this part inside to be visible this is cool so let me see yeah, this is really nice move it a little bit here maybe tilt it a touch like this and I just want to erase this part I will use eraser because I really don't need this ever yes it's a destructive way but I don't need it so I can even raise it a little bit more like this okay we will make this darker so we will not have we will not uh, this will not be visible if even I raise it like this don't worry so let me see and this arm the uh, left arm his left arm let's let's group everything together his left arm is done so left arm okay and maybe to put the shoulder in so shoulder in the folder put the shoulder in the folder and then move it all the way down so like here that's great we have our left arm ready to go maybe the hand needs to be a touch bigger like this and more inside here and then I want to raise this even more 
It looks too small right now, so that's cool. So let me see. Now it's much better. Also, I want to play with this part a little bit. So I want to move it, maybe to bring this up. I'm just holding Control or Command key. Not bigger, just higher like that. And I think it's okay. What do you think, guys? Yeah, okay, then we will leave it like that. Then what I want to, uh, to do, I want to copy the left arm. So just press Control Command J on the folder. We have a copy, move it right here. I don't need a shoulder, I will delete it because it will not be visible on the other side. And I just want to rotate this, right click, flip horizontal and put it somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, just for now. And then we will rename this to right arm and move it all the way down under the body. Okay, that's cool. So I can move it somewhere here. And yes, if you want, uh, you can uh, change this uh, hand maybe to find another similar, this tool. If you don't have it, like I don't have it, I will use the same hands. Nobody will notice that. We can dodge it and burn it, change a little bit uh, color uh, lights and, and that's it. All right, guys, now we can just rotate this part here a little bit up, just to have a different position, maybe even like this, why not? Okay, that's cool. And we can make this slide a little bit bigger. I just want it touch bigger like this, let me see. Yes, I like it like that better than when it's smaller. Okay, and we are almost done. Now what I like to do, I like to add some texture to these parts of the arm and that's really easy. So I will go and select this one. It's R number two. And now I will just copy the body because I will add the body part. I will copy with Control Command J, move it all the way up and clip it to affect only the arm. To clip, you need to hold Alt or Option key and click in between the layers. And as you can see, this is it. I can make it smaller like this and that's it. So now I need to put this into overlay blending mode or, or soft light, so whatever you want. I like to put it in overlay. Then I like to make this part, the arm to lighter, brighter. So I will use curves for that and just make everything brighter. As you can see, we have really nice element. Also, I like to go to the blues and add a little bit more blue, just maybe in the shadows touch because now it's too much yellows okay just a bit and this is cool this is really cool now then we will play with shadowing uh, this part underneath but now let's repeat the same step let's copy those two layers to our second arm so it's right here okay let's move it down and put it right here okay Copy it and move this to affect only this arm. So as you can see, this is cool. Now we have the same texture as on this can on the body. And this is really cool. Also, I like to make this one a little bit brighter. Just a touch. And now we'll go to blue and remove some blue. Because now there is too much blue. Maybe a bit here. And this is it. This is almost okay. Also, I want to fix this a little bit. Now it's too much out like this and then just erase this. Okay, everything is destructive right now, but I don't care. Now that we made finally a robot, we are finished with all the parts with assembling. Now it's time to play with the lights and shadow, to dodge and burn, to add some shadows, to make the robot more compact and to glue some elements together with the shadows, etc. So let's do that. Okay, let's start from the top. Let's start from the eyes. I want to select the eyes right here and I want to create a new layer below the eyes. To create a new layer below the current layer, just press Ctrl or Command key and click on create new layer. This will be eyes shadow. Okay. Now I will just use black color 
or I can use red color right here and put it in a multiply blending mode and just paint on this eye shadow with maybe 50% opacity. Let me see, 20, 50 is too much. So just to make everything dark right here. Also guys, now we need to decide uh, the direction of the light overall in the scene. I already did that, so I will create a new layer and let me show how our lights will go. The main light will go like this, okay? Oof, not like that, but like, like this. Down below, it will hit this part. Then here, everything will be in the shadows. Here, everything will be in the shadows. And probably, whole this part of the body will be in the shadow. Here, here, etc. So, this will be in the shadow. This underneath. And that's it. So this is how our light, main light will go. So I will delete this. Okay, and now let's continue making the shadow just below the eyes. Right here. Just paint, take your time. Just paint this shadow a little bit. And this will be, let me see. This is not strong enough, so I can make a copy or I can just go with the black layer and with or just this darker color. So just a darker color with maybe 20% opacity again and just build up this shadow a little bit. Okay. So let's make it even darker to add here. And uh, yeah, I don't want to go over this like that. Okay, let me see. Before and after, much better. I can just add a little bit more shadow right here. like that. So this is nice. Also, if I don't want to go over this to make sure that I don't go over the head, I can just press control or command select the head and just click here on the eyes shadow, click on the layer mask and now I'm covered. My layer mask is only making this shadow to affect the, the head. So that's cool. I can paint here nothing but I can paint here. It will be okay. So let me see just quickly this is cool and of course guys i will not spend too much time here tweaking this because it can last for a while i will not do that but for now it's okay i can maybe even just add shadow to go in this direction right here okay just like that and then i can use eraser tool really soft one with 10% opacity, really soft one like this, 10% opacity, just, just do this. Okay, this is cool. So this is shadow from the eyes. Then let's make another one. I'll make this a little bit more transparent. Then make another one here under, under the head. So on the body part. Okay, let's go to the body right here and uh, let's create a shadow here from the head. So I will use elliptical marquee tool, just create some kind of ellipse. Okay, create new layer. I will name it shadow, body shadow, body neck. Okay, this upper part. And then I will go right click, let me see. Right click and then transform selection. And by holding control or command key, I will just move this right here and just reposition this to fit my needs like that. Almost perfect. Like this. And something like that. I will press enter and then I will fill this, fill this with uh, dark green color so this one like 
like this. To fill it, I will press Alt and Backspace, and that's it. I will put this into Multiply Blending Mode, and uh, I can now go and say Filter Blur Gaussian Blur, and just blur this a little bit, like, like that. Okay, and now I need to lower the opacity because now it's too much. I can transform it even more, or outside, or here. That's cool. And also this back part, let's lower it like this. Okay, so not bad, not bad at all. I can just add layer mask here and with really soft brush with 10% opacity, I can just paint over the back part right here, back part of the shadow. Just to make it a little bit brighter. Okay, and I can add even darker shadow right here. So to do that, I will create a new layer. So this is a neck. Okay, and now I will just really quickly paint here with 10% opacity. I'll put this in multiply. Just add a little bit more shadow right here. Just a touch. Okay, now I like it. Right, maybe, maybe this is still too big. I'm not sure, but I think it is like that. So that's better. I like this better. And let's fix this part right here. Yeah, like this. Okay, now I like it. So we are done with this shadow. I can maybe make it more opaque like that. And now let's go with the shadow from the shoulder and a little bit of the arm, etc. I will fast forward this. It's completely the same procedure, guys. So you don't need to watch me doing this slowly. You will see this in fast forward. I will just create a new layer just below the shoulder and name it shoulder shadow and that's it. And also guys, I want to go to the body Right, uh, control click to select the body and then add it as a mask on a shadow because I don't want to paint with this shadow outside of the body. So basically this is it. This is the shoulder shadow. I'll just lower the opacity a bit. You will see later I will add one global shadow and now I will do the same here. So this is arm. I can go here a little bit differently. I can add curves adjustment layer, clip it to affect only arm and I can make it darker, invert it and just, just with the white brush, really soft brush, just paint right here. So, okay, like this. And I will do the same for this hand right here. But, but for this hand, I will do a little bit different. I will go, I will go right there to the right arm and create curves adjustment layer, clip it to affect whole folder like this, invert it and just paint this part. I will add some shadow right here down below and that's it. Also here I want to add shadow, okay? But I will add it a little bit differently. So I will select this, this is our hand and I will create a new empty layer and name it hand shadow and I will just paint with the black. I will use a black color brush and just paint it to a 10% opacity and just paint it here because this actually will not be so visible, it will be in the dark and that's it. Now it's much better. I will do the same for this part right here. So again create layer, name it hand. This is much better. So this is really cool. Okay, now let's play with the lights. Again, I will fast forward this guy. So I just need to add shadow to the lights. So. Okay, this is our shadow for the light. And we are basically done with all shadowing parts, etc. So 
Now what I like to do before adding a global light effect and global shadow at shadows and highlights, I like to match all the colors. Now the robot looks nothing special. It's cool, it's cute, but we need to uniform it. So we need to choose the main color for this guy. I will choose a yellowish orange color because that's what I like. You can make it green, blue, whatever color you want. So let's colorize this guy. Okay, let's start with the head. So let's change the color of the head. I will just select the head and then add hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I don't want to mess with the master hue and saturation slider because if I mess with that, as you can see, let's clip it to affect only the head. I will change the color of the, these letters and this part right here, so I don't want that. I will zero this out and I will go to the reds because I just want to change the color of this red part. And I want to make it more like, like this. This is cool color, maybe. Maybe like that, maybe a little bit more saturated. And this is it for now. I can then add curse adjustment layer, clip it to affect only that and make everything darker. So I really like this. And it's not the same if you put the curves above the hue saturation or below hue saturation. You will see slightly variation. Sometimes it's even uh, more obvious variation. So I will do like that. And then I can lower Let's go to reds, lower the saturation right here and maybe change it more towards the yellows like that. And that's cool. Okay, now let's do the similar for the eyes. Uh, again, hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip to effects only eyes and make this more yellowish, maybe a little bit darker, but not like that. I will use definitely curves adjustment layer again, make everything a little bit more dark like that and that's it so we match the colors of the head and the eyes now let's do the same for the body select the body hue and saturation adjustment layer clip to affect only that and now guys i will use the master slider actually i will click colorize and i will colorize this so i'll go to yellows move the saturation up and try to match match the saturation also, let me see right here. We need to colorize the shadow of the body and neck. So we will do that later. Okay, so again, curse, 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 adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the body. And now let's, let's play with this. Let's add some kind of contrast like this. I like it. So maybe then go back here lower the saturation and display i can click here and just with the arrows nudge it a little bit so i really like it this looks cool maybe a little bit more towards the yellows like that and then i will copy the same hue and saturation adjustment layer by holding alter option key and just drag it above right here to affect the neck color and actually i can I can go with uh, neck shadow and body shadow, select them both, press Control command E and that's it. So as you can see, this shadow is now yellow, but I don't want this shadow to be so yellow. I want to, this shadow to be more like, more like dark. It can be a little bit yellow because it will reflect all the colors there like this, but not like bright yellow. So let me see, it can be can be like that okay this is cool so let's leave it leave it there then let's do the same for the arms actually i don't want to colorize this only these green parts so let's go right here and uh, let me see i need to colorize this so i will go i will go on the hand first and i will decolorize hand i will press shift control u or shift command u so desaturate this one because I like it like silver one. Then go right here, hue and saturation adjustment layer and colorize and just colorize this. Okay, like that, curves. Guys, basically everything is the same so I can easily fast forward this. Okay, so 
that's it as you can see let's just collapse the groups neck light okay light then the next shadow where it is next shadow it's here i need to colorize the next shadow not, not next shadow but a light shadow it's right here so i need to colorize that too okay that's better i like it and guys we are almost done i just want to go right here and to change the saturation actually the hue of this more towards the yellows like that to better fit the rest and that's cool okay now what we need to do is to make a global lights adjustment so for that i will use exposure adjustment layer over the top of everything and then just play with the mask of exposure adjustment layer so let's do it okay but before we do that i just want to tweak the eyes a little bit so let's go to the eyes and link the chain icon between the eyes shadows and the mask and just select both of them i'll press ctrl command t make it a tiny smaller and move it to the left and just rotate a little bit like this even more to the left let me see now maybe tiny smaller the yeah, eyes it's a little bit strained right now i don't know why but like this maybe yeah so let me see this is a little bit better mm, i'm not sure guys so this to look a little bit on that side or maybe this but just to make it tiny smaller and rotate it like that maybe i don't know yeah i will leave it like that okay so now let's let's group everything let's clean this a little bit so i will group the eyes okay so everything is much cleaner right now and i will leave it like that i can i can even play with this put it inside to the arm part right there because basically we just mess with that and that's cool so let's hide this and now everything is much cleaner so what i like to do now i like to go all the way up create a new exposure adjustment layer and just move it down but now it's affecting the background and everything so i like to create a mask just for this robot so there is a trick for that we just need to hide the background and just go right here and merge everything into new one layer with shift ctrl alt or shift command option e on a mac and that's it now we have this robot in a new layer i will hide it because i will not need it right now and i will just delete this mask Control or command click to select the robot go right here and just create a new mask and now i have just mask on the robot that's one way another way maybe it's better let's undo it let's leave this mask untacked is to go and create a group with the selection of the robot just click here on the group and add a mask on a group now put the exposure inside the group and whatever we do on exposure layer it will only affect the robot because it's in a group okay that's cool so i will invert it and now i will paint the shadow where the shadow should be so as we said earlier the light should go like this so this part right here should be in the shadow okay and this part right here like this a little bit harder brush so it should go from here all the way like this maybe 40 percent opacity and just i'll just paint right here i'll just paint like this 100 percent opacity actually to have a better uniform light here and then I will play with that so that's cool I can just raise this okay I'm holding shift and moving up and down that's cool and now let me see here is okay and here 
this will be in the shadows definitely it will go like like this so here the light will hit but this part will be in the shadow of course the neck too this part right here and let me see okay now i will play with this i will use a white brush well actually black brush 10 percent opacity really soft brush and guys i will just play here with this i will fast forward this just i'm basically just painting back some lights so just to tweak this a little bit better Right guys and this is this is it now let's find the background for the background i want to add something like this so this will be our background i'll go right here paste it and just make it smaller now it's way big so something like something like this and i can go with a filter maybe gaussian blur let me see and just blur this like that i can just blur it just to have some kind of shapes but not recognizable like this make it a little bit bigger because now it's too blurred okay and uh, this is really cool what i like to do now is to play with the lights i want to add some lights here lights on the eyes and basically we're done so let's go all the way up again everything what i do now i will do about all the layers create new layers create new layer so put it all the way up and rename it to eye slide okay and i will use white color and with harder brush like this just paint inside of course you can use a pen tool to be more precise and just go and create a path right here and then fill it with white but i will not do it right now you should it will be better but okay so we have white eyes and what i like to do right now i want to double click on this and go to outer glow and just add this kind of glow to the eyes you can see it's really nice it's really cool so we can play here with uh, the settings we can change the size etc but this is really cool so i will leave it like that press ok and the eyes are glowing now what i like to add to that new layer ice beam i think it's spelled like this if not never mind so i will go with a softer brush like this like 50 percent okay make it wide like that let me see that's cool and just press here hold shift and just press right here then again you can move it a little bit so something like that then I will do the same for this eye, make it a little bit smaller, click here, press and hold shift and just click right there. So this is cool, but this is not the final effect. I will add layer mask, I will go to gradient tool and make sure that the black is my foreground color, so you can see black to white, foreground to background color. And now what I like to do, go from here like this and as you can see we have really nice light beams but we are not done yet with this what we need to do let's just warp it a little bit a little bit okay with this what we need to do we need to add some we need to add some uh, blur blur to that but i'm not satisfied how these shapes these beams are shaped so i will undo it and do it again in fast forward you know the procedure you just saw it so let's delete this okay guys this is much better now i will go to blur and just blur it a bit not so much just a bit have a softer beams like this maybe 20 let me see something like that Probably the box blur will be cool here. So let me try blur, then block box blur, and it's a different kind of blur. Yeah, it's cool. Maybe it's better for this, this blocks blur. 
Also, guys, you can do this on two separate layers, one being from each from each uh, eye because you will have more, more options to move each beam however you want. But now this is this is cool too. So this is okay, but also I can move it up like this. I can move it up to change the position of the beam, maybe even more. Why not? We can do that. So it's easier when these beams are on separate, a separate layer, but I really like it like that. And now let's just add some light here and we're basically done. So uh, let's create new layer. This is, this is body light. Okay. And what I like to do right here, I like to again go to the brush, white color and just create something like this right here. Control Command T, go to warp. Just change the shape a little bit, like change the perspective like it's inside. Okay, and for this, I will just go again, double click. And uh, I will go with outer glow, but this time I will change the color to maybe some bluish tint. Okay, straight a little bit brighter. We will see. And uh, also, what I like to do here, guys, I like to change this. I like to add my own curve. Just click on a curve and I like to play with the curve. You can see the shape is changing of the light. I will make light a little bit more. You can see now the shape is different. So maybe like bluish or, or maybe white. We can change it later and I will press OK and now I will right click and say here on the effects and say create layers. So this will be our separate layer. Then I can transform it. Control Command T and just move it here to change the perspective of, of this better. And this is cool. And I will just add a little bit more glow here. So. This is it. This is really cool. Maybe to make it overall bigger. Like, uh, no, inside. And then I will create about this body light glow. Okay, something like glow. And I will again use white color, 10% opacity and just just do like, like this, just a touch. Maybe it's too much, just a touch. Maybe it's too much. So it's a rhyme. Let's play with the opacity a little bit, maybe like this. And then I will press control command T and I can transform this a little bit. Maybe like, maybe like this. Let me see. like that and let's raise here so before and after and overall yeah before and after really cool right guys and now i will add some flying particles behind the robot and front of the robot blur them a little bit do a final color correction and we are done okay to do that we need to go all the way down about the background create a new layer and let's rename it particles number one Okay, and what I like to do now, I like to change the brush property. So I will use white color, 100% opacity, and I will just paint some dots, but not like this. They need to be a lot smaller. And also I need to change some properties like increase spacing all the way up, size jitter all the way up, then scattering a little bit, actually all the way up, and that's it. And now let's just change, you can see, change the brush size and this is it. So we have some particles, but I will make it smaller, like a few here. Okay. And I will blur this. I will go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, but not so much, just a little bit. Okay. Something like or less. Okay. And then I will go to filter, blur and the motion blur. So maybe just a touch and also I can change the opacity so just a little bit 
Okay, then I can go and add here and saturation adjustment layer. Clip it to affect only that. Click colorize, make everything darker and increase saturation and change the color a little bit more towards the yellow so you can see just touch. Then we can create a new layer above everything and we will name it particles number two. Okay, and here we will do the same but with a different kind of brush. So I will create a new document with 25 by 2500, press OK and I will just create another type of brush. So I will use a black color, 100% opacity and just, just create, let me see, just a regular brush. Just create this guys, just this kind of shape, okay? Maybe it's too long, so like, like this. This is cool. And now I will just transform this into a brush. We'll go edit and define brush preset and name it dust. Okay, I can close this. I don't need it anymore like that. And now I have my brush and on the particles number two, I can play with this brush, but I need to change properties again. Same shape dynamic all the way up then angle jitter just a little bit, scattering all the way up and spacing all the way up. So what I did, I increased the spacing between each stroke, then I changed the size, each, si each stroke will be a little bit different size, then I changed the angle, so it's, it, it will have a little bit variation of the angle, not too much, and scattering, so it will scatter up and down, so that's it. And now when I paint here, I need to have white brush, so you can see, it's really cool, but the brush is too big, so I'll just go with even smaller, like, like this, like that, and smaller one even here, really small one, like this, even smaller, like that, so that's cool, maybe even smaller, like real dust, so yeah, like this, like subtle, just like small dust right there. Let's undo this a few times. I just want to make it better, like. Like this, and then I will lower the opacity of this. Like only small, tiny dust. Okay, and then with the particles, this one, I will go again to filter. Uh, first, let's let's do a motion blur. Okay, like that. It's okay. Then go to filter blur and Gaussian blur. Just blur it. Touch. And as you can see, guys, this is really nice. What I like to do here again, like previous, I like to add hue and saturation adjustment layer, colorize everything and make darker to be able to colorize it. Just maybe add some orange color, something like, something like this is cool. That's nice. I like it. So this is it. We're basically done here. Now there are some small tweaks that we can do. I will show you one really cool trick how you can add some like depth of field, something like that to add even more impact to the image. But before that, let's, let's, uh, let's do another trick. Again, hide the background like this and now merge everything together right here. Okay, and now bring the background all the way up. So just bring it up just below the robot, okay, so we have a robot, we have a background, and now with the robot, choose the smudge tool, okay, and just smudge, like move, small movements, like blur, just some parts here, of course you can, you can do differently, you can, you can go with blur tool, and uh, mask, etc, but I really like this method, because I will make some imperfections on the robot. Alright guys, so I added this really 
tiny depth of field also you can use blur tool and just with that add even more blur so i'll, I'll go with strength all the way to 100 percent and just add even more blur right here so that's optional totally you don't need to do this i really like it you can you can use radio blur tool if you want to blur it at all and there are several ways how you can do that okay so we are almost done what i like to do now i like to go with the curves and add a little bit more lights to the robot here with a brush black uh, actually white brush let's go to normal brush right here soft brush and change the size opacity maybe 10 percent just add some brightness right here okay just add some variation here and there also i could i could make this darker but i will leave that for you guys this is not a finished finished robot i will finish it maybe and put it on instagram but for now it's okay and also for the background i will make part of the background bright brighter just this part right here maybe 40 percent and just okay just like that that's really cool so also let's go to the robot and make some parts darker just want to add more contrast here maybe 20 percent just to make these parts a little bit darker again so that's cool and guys now we can go to mm, maybe this is too bright i actually want maybe to to darken that part a little bit yeah just a little bit and this part even more but this needs a little bit more fine tuning but it's okay and also guys now i'll merge everything together shift control alt shift command option e on a mac go to filter and uh, camera roll filter and just play here a little bit add a little bit more contrast like this add a little bit more clarity that's cool I can play with vignetting just a touch, feather it. Also, I want to sharpen everything, not too much. Let me see, I'm holding outer option key and to see the radius, so that's cool. And uh, also, I can add some bluish tint into highlights just a little bit, and maybe some reddish here into shadows. Yes, I like that like an older look see it's cool maybe like that i will move this to affect more shadows than highlights and make highlights even cooler so this is this is one way this is another way do however you want i will just make it before and after make it a little bit more reddish okay and then i can go again right here open the shadows a bit and do that and maybe just a touch let me see make everything on a cool side overall like that press ok and this is before and after overall so i really like it and guys this is it for now of course we can tweak it a lot let me show you just really quick we can go to blur gallery go to field blur and uh, if you like you can go actually not field blur but 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 spin not spin let me see yeah we can go with a tilt shift i'll press ok so this is another variation that you can do so before and after yeah you can do that and uh, that's it guys so i'm not sure if i like this blur or not i will leave it without maybe or tweak it a little bit later and put my version of on Instagram. So that's it. Right guys, and that's it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, that you like it and that you learn some new and useful tips and tricks from this one. 
Now it's up to you to practice, experiment, have fun and to create your own version of a robot out of stock images. If you create something interesting, fun, please put it on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see what you came up with after watching this tutorial. Also, if you want to practice uh, along with this tutorial, you can download all the tutorial files that you use in, in uh, this episode. The link, download link is down there in the description. So check that out. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please ask me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer them. Also, guys, if you want to support me and help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. So check it out. And also you will get some things in return, for example, like all my PSD files, etc. Right, guys, if you appreciate this content, if you like this content, press that like button, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. Have fun, guys, and see you in my next fun episode. Bye bye.